One of the most common things we need to do in game development is set up player characters, characters that the player can move around. I remember the first time I did that in Unity, I spent a couple hours and ended up with a really terrible result that walked through walls and had all kinds of issues. Now that process has changed and it's a lot easier. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a character in third person that can run, jump, push objects around, and interact with the world exactly how you'd like in about two minutes. It's a method supported by Unity, this video's sponsor, and detailed in the Game Designer Playbook that you can download below for free. Thanks again, Unity, for sponsoring this video, and go check out the ebook, learn a little bit more about Unity and some of their new recommendations. Before I dive into the solution, I want to really quickly give one example of a scenario that you might have run into yourself, which is testing out some assets. So I've got an asset pack that I've grabbed, and I want to run around with a character in it. A lot of the asset packs don't even have a character. This one looks great, but has a character that gets stuck all the time on the walls. And I'd like to have a third person character instead of a first person and get a better view of how my character fits in the environment. So let's get to the solution. To solve this problem, we're gonna use Unity's own package, the Starter Assets Third Person Character Controller. You can grab this on the Asset Store or click the link in the description or in that PDF, and then choose the Add to My Assets option. Once it's added to your account, you should be able to open it up in Unity. When you open it, it should pop over to your package manager and select the Starter Assets Third Person Character Controller. If you don't see that, make sure that you go to the Window and then choose Package Manager and then go to My Assets, make sure that you've selected that, not Unity Registry or In Project, and search for Starter Assets. That should find it and maybe one or two other things, but find the Third Person Character Controller and import that package into your project. I'll choose import all, we'll pull in the entire package, and it's going to prompt me to change my input settings to use the new input settings in just a moment. When this pops up, I'm going to choose yes. If you really need to choose no, make sure that you stick around for the end and I'll show you how to get the package actually working with the old input system, because by default it does need to switch to the new input system. There it is, we'll just choose yes. Changing the input system, of course, will force the project to reopen, so it's gonna shut down and then reopen and re-import. So it may take a minute, don't worry, nothing's going wrong, we're just switching to the new input system. Once that's done, you can open up the new starter assets example scene. That's inside the third person controller scenes folder and then choose playground. This will actually let you run around, see the character and see how it's going to look feel and act in your environment before you move it over. You can use WASD to run around just like a normal character would. Use the mouse to turn and rotate the camera around your character. Hold down the left shift to sprint and jump with the space bar. You can run upstairs, run over things and fall down. All of it works perfectly and animates pretty great too. So let's stop playing and see how we can pull this character into our own scene. First, we'll go into one of these space station scenes. I think I'll go with the clean sci-fi one first. We'll open it up and find their demo scene. Here in the demo scene, I can see that they have a character set up with this player simple script or a player move script on a player simple object. And underneath that, they have the camera and that's what's moving us around and getting us stuck. So I'm gonna delete our player simple or the one that was included with the scene and the camera. So I should now have no camera rendering. And then I'm gonna go into the starter assets, third person controller, prefabs subfolder, and choose the nested parent armature underscore unpack. Drag that right into my scene. Make sure that the position is all zeroed out except for the Y, which is at a one. So my character is actually standing right here in front of me. And then I'm going to right click choose prefab and choose unpack. That's going to unpack the root prefab, notice that it's no longer blue, and leave all of the other child prefabs that we need for our character in the scene. Now before I hit play and run around and show you how this just magically worked and how awesome it actually is, I wanna add a quick light over my character so that I can see him since this scene is really dark and has no real time lighting. So I'm gonna right click on my character, let's go find the 
player armature, right click, I'll choose a light and I'm gonna choose a spotlight. We'll create a spotlight that's maybe two meters above and rotated 90 degrees down with a slightly wider angle to just kind of light that character up. Maybe just a little bit more intensity as well. Then we'll hit play and watch what we get for no code and almost no work. We now have a character that can walk around in the scene. He can sprint. He doesn't get stuck on things. He can walk right along the walls, our little robot, and he can jump up on things like these crates, trigger our doors opening and everything else. Look, that door looks like it was locked. Now to prove this out a little bit more, let's just try it in one more scene. Here I've got a more high-tech space station where we've got higher detailed textures and things might be a little bit different. Let's see if it works. I'll go delete out the character that they've got in here that has a camera underneath it. Then we'll take the nested parent armature unpack, drag it into the scene, right click, choose prefab, and again choose unpack. Not unpack completely, but unpack, and then press the play button. Check out our character as he runs around and is actually well lit, but fell right into that hole. That's all right, though. Let's see if we can jump out, see if our character actually fits, and we get a good view of what our character could actually see. So we jump, and yep, we've got a little bit of balancing to do here. That door doesn't open, but I bet if I run, sprint, and come over to this other door, it'll open right up, and then I can go maybe explore this space station as well. See if this is maybe a model that I wanna use or an environment that I wanna use or start building my game. I've got a character set up to run around. Now I just need to add in some combat and other gameplay elements. But what if you wanna use your own character model? Maybe you're like, Jason, I don't wanna use this uh, blank looking robot character. I've got this really cool human character that I grabbed on the asset store and I wanna use that instead. How easy is that? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Let's take a look at our nested parent armature unpack and expand that out. Underneath it, we have the five objects that we're actually using. The camera, the follow camera, which is the virtual camera, our player armature, there's the UI that we have there for the pop-up so that you can control with a thumbs or fingers, I guess, on a tablet or mobile device. And then we've got the event system. The UI and event system I don't actually care about, so I'm just gonna turn those off. And then I'm gonna go take a look at the player armature. Underneath the player armature, we have the camera root, which is the thing that our camera is following. If we look at the player follow camera, you see that the follow target is actually set to that camera root. That's how it stays right behind the character. Then we have the geometry and the skeleton. The geometry is just the mesh there, and the skeleton is the rig. If I wanna pull in my own character, I can simply delete or deactivate those two objects. First though, I wanna right click on my player armature and unpack that prefab. So go to prefab and choose unpack, and then find my geometry and my skeleton. And I like to start by just disabling them, make sure that everything's working and then eventually delete them. Then I'll go find my new character model. For this one, I've used the human character model from Infinity PBR on the asset store. I'm gonna go into the characters subfolder and find my human. So I'll find the prefab, human, and I'll take the, let's take the human female this time. I'll drag it out underneath the player armature so that I now have a character that's set up right at the center or at the root of my character armature. Make sure that that's true. Go here and set the position and rotation to zero if not. And then you're gonna see that we have all of our normal character stuff underneath. If I just hit play now, we're gonna have some issues. My animations aren't gonna be working right and my character's not gonna look exactly right. You can see that she's just kind of standing there and acting a little bit strange. She does move around though, but she's not animating right and I wanna fix that. So we'll stop playing and what we're gonna do is actually remove the animator from the child object that I've dragged in. And the reason for that is that our player armature, if you look at it, already has an animator on it. So we'll go down to the human female, we'll right click, remove the animator component. I don't need that there. And we'll look to see if there are any other movement related components on my object. If you pull in an asset from the pre, or an asset from the asset store, it's often possible that it's gonna have some movement script on there. So just make sure that there aren't any on there. And then go up to the player armature. On the player armature, we just need to set the avatar correctly. We'll want to choose the female and, oh, female, there we go, V4. Let's see if we can find it. Human female V4 avatar. So with that avatar selected, I should be able to press play and run around and see my character. Look at her go. She's running, jumping, animating. She can sprint and jump over that little hole, go through the door, 
and continue on. Now I've got a character that's working. It's my own character in another environment with no code and almost no work. Now the final thing I wanna cover is how to make this work with the old input system, just in case you need it. And it'll give us a chance to dive a little bit more into how this system works. If you take a look at the player armature, you see that underneath it we have a starter assets input, a player input, and a third person controller. We also have a character controller that they're using under the hood to drive this third person controller. Or perhaps the third person controller script is really driving the character controller, would be a better way to put it. And it does that by reading the input from the starter assets inputs. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. First though, let's look at the third person controller script, some of the options that we have available. You can see that you can control the move speed and the sprint speed. You can adjust how fast the character rotates, how fast they jump, how quickly they fall, and their grounding information. And this is an important one. Make sure that if your character is not able to jump or they're acting a little bit strange, that this ground layer matches whatever you have for your actual ground. Notice that my ground is set to the default layer and the ground layer that the character is looking for is the default layer. If you don't have colliders and you, or you don't have that set correctly, you'll find that your character acts very, very strange. The other things that we have are some Cinemachine options for how much we can adjust the camera, how far above and below or to the sides we can go. And then we have the scripts for our controls. We have the player input script, which reads the input and then sends messages that are listened to by the starter assets inputs. The starter assets inputs is referenced by the third person controller to drive that character controller. So our third person controller is looking at this starter assets input and generally receiving messages from player input. But what if we want to also receive messages from the old input system? Well, if you open up your starter assets inputs script, you'll see that there's actually a section for that in lines 49 here, but it's actually after the else statement for the if enable input system, which means enable the new input system. So if the new input system is being used, this code will run. Otherwise, the code here between the else and end if will run. So if we want to deal with old input system, we could add in an update method right here. And in the update, we just need to pass in the state of all of our different inputs. For example, jump input will pass in the state of our jump button. And then the sprint input will pass in the state of our left shift key. We can do the same for mouse inputs. We just need to pass in a vector. And for movement, we just need to translate WASD or our horizontal vectors and just pass those directly in. You could use input.getAxis and pass that right in. It'll work just fine. That said, you probably want to use the new input system, but if you really need to go back to the old one, this is an option. You can also just use both input systems at the same time. That'll work fine without making any changes to this code. And the reason I'd want to minimize making changes is just that I expect that they'll continue to update this package and add more functionality to it as time goes on. As we get new LTS versions of Unity, I expect these packages to continue to be upgraded, improved upon, and just become a standard way for implementing characters in Unity. Now, if you want to learn more about this, again, make sure that you check out the free ebook down below. It's available and gives a lot of detail into Unity development, including characters and a lot of other things, all the way up to publishing your game. So if you're interested in that or you're interested in just game development in general, check it out. Make sure that you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, share. And if you have questions about this or just things that you'd like to see, please drop a comment down below and let me know. It really helps and gives me a lot of guidance and what types of things to cover and what things you're interested in. And also helps me cover any missing points that I might have not covered well enough throughout my videos. So please drop a comment, let me know. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.